Welcome back. Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi is encouraging Democrats to support health care reform at all costs, even if it means losing their elected seats. But Fox News senior political analyst Britt Hume says that could be dangerous. Listen. It's distinctly possible she may be able to round up enough votes to pass something. The question then, of course, becomes whether she's leading her troops on a suicide mission, which I think she may well be doing. Pennsylvania Representative Jason Altmaier joins us now. Congressman, do you feel like you're on a suicide mission? I think every member has to go back to their district and decide that they're going to cast their vote for the way that their constituents want. I represent a district where uh, there's been some skepticism over the health care bills that have put, been put forward in the past. I voted against the House health care bill for that reason. I'm not going to cast a vote that my constituents aren't comfortable with. Let's be honest about something here. After Scott Brown won the election in Massachusetts, were there some conservative Democrats who had originally voted yes for health care reform who said, Phew, thank goodness Scott Brown won, even though he's a Republican, because now I don't have to vote for health care reform. Well, the House already had a vote, so every member of the House is on record one way or the other. I do think there are probably some people who voted yes that went home and they were not well received and would like to have a do-over. I, I think there might be some folks on the other side of that as well. But there probably are people who voted yes that would like to have a second bite of the apple. All right, I want to listen to the speaker again because she uses one word in particular about you as Democrats and what you should do when it comes to the health care reform vote. Listen. Well, first of all, our members, every one of them, uh, wants health care. I think everybody wants affordable health care for all Americans. Uh, they know that this will take courage. It took courage to pass Social Security. It took courage to pass Medicare. And many of the same forces that were at work decades ago are at work again against this bill. Is her courage argument convincing enough for you to risk your career and vote yes? Well, again, risking your career implies that you're going to cast a vote that is blatantly against the will of your constituents. I'm not going to do that. I represent a district that is pretty evenly split politically. I hear from both sides on this issue. The House health care bill, by and large, was unpopular in my district. Mm -hmm. We'll see what the president puts out, and then I'm going to make my decision. But I don't think any member, uh, very few, are going to cast votes that are absolutely on the other side of public opinion in their district. Hi, this is Larry. During these tough economic times, hardworking families across upstate New York have been forced to cut back and tighten their financial belts. It's time for Congress to do the same and set an example for the rest of the federal government. That is why last week I introduced the Congressional Belt Tightening Act of 2010, which cuts the salaries of members of Congress and our office budgets by 5% for the next two years. Last year, my office tightened its financial belt and returned more than 8% of our official office budget, which comes out to more than $120,000 to the Treasury Department to pay down on our national deficit. Additionally, we should pass legislation that requires votes on pay raises every year. No more automatic pay raises. My bill would require a vote first on all salary increases and that would happen indefinitely. If members think they are deserving of a raise, they will have to vote for it and answer to the American people. We are faced with many challenges, such as reforming our nation's health care system and working to fix our economy while creating jobs to put people back to work in our district. There is no reason that members of Congress should operate in a bubble and be exempt from the same cost-cutting and responsible budgeting that our families and small businesses must do to stay afloat in these tough economic times. Congress can't seriously talk about reining in spending in Washington and working to decrease our nation's debt if we are not willing to do it ourselves. Because it's easy to talk tough on this, it's harder to deliver. I personally like Senator McCain's suggestion, let's get rid of all the special deals. That's just a starting point. Paul Ryan is right again, and Tom Coburn is right when they point out that we're probably wasting a third of medical spending. Medicare alone is $37 trillion in the hole. And that means for all the folks who want to talk tough and not vote tough, that's not good enough. 
it means that for all the folks who want to do this next year or next decade or leave it to their successor, that's not good enough. We've had some examples of how we've behaved recently. A wonderful bipartisan measure, the Conrad Gregg Bill, completely bipartisan for years and a bipartisan fiscal responsibility commission was brought up for vote in the Senate. We had the 60 votes, but only 53 people showed up for work. Seven people who'd been original co-sponsors of that measure suddenly got different ideas when the moment of truth came. So, Mr. President, I'm thankful you have appointed a presidential fiscal responsibility commission with Alan Simpson and Erskine Bowles to try to force us as a Congress and force the nation to address these fundamental problems. Because if you love Medicare, you need to act to save it fast. Every day matters. A report will come out issued by the Treasury Department. It's come out every year. It'll come out in the next few days. It's the only report that uses real accounting to describe America's fiscal problems. And the news is not pretty. It will reaffirm what's been discussed here about Medicare and Medicaid and other vital American programs being deeply in the hole. And the opportunity of cost for delay is extraordinary. So we can face these problems, Mr. President. We can solve them with political will. But the talking points won't do it. We've got to acknowledge the real questions. And as every business person in America knows, if you can't measure it, you can't manage it. And too many people in the federal government are refusing to measure it. says no so people say um, yet the language in the Senate bill is very different than the language in the House bill um, those who are pushing the language in the Senate bill say that that's the language that is it because they they actually believe it suffices and no federal funding for abortion or do you think that they are sort of covertly trying to get funding for abortion well there's no doubt that uh the Democratic Party is sort of pro-choice party, and uh, the fact that there's been a restriction of federal funding for abortion has been against a lot of their beliefs. And here's an opportunity to change the law, to change the law to allow, whether it's tax credits or federal funding for abortion coverage, which has been banned for 33 years in this country. Uh, so here's their opportunity. They're taking their opportunity to push that idea that there should be federal funding tax credits or subsidies for abortion. They think it's wrong that that benefit is not provided. I think it's wrong that taxpayers would pay for that benefit. Hi, I'm Congressman Raul Crijalva representing Southern Arizona. Short of a single player plan, universal health care, which I support very, very much, Health care reform package must include a public option that is robust, that has real resource support, that people can choose, that is competitive, and that provides the American people with a real choice. Uh, if this is not part of the overall health reform package, then it's not worth supporting, and I won't support it. 